Hello, and welcome back to The Pulse with Willie and Al. How's it going today, bro? Oh, pretty good, man. Pretty good. How about you? It's going, man. It's hot here in Turkey, but we are, uh, we're handling it. We're handling the business, right? <laughs> yes, sir. How's yeah, it? no, it's, it's cooled off here now. Thank fucking God. <laughs> it's, oh, I don't have my AC on anymore. It's so nice. Mm, you definitely need it. So... All right, so today, guys, we are back. We're bringing you our 51st episode. This is our Got the Thirst episode, and I think you know what kind of thirst we're talking about there. Uh, We'll talk to Dr. Zaddy about that. Uh, Well, it is almost football season, baby, so a few more weeks here. Uh, We've already got the first week of preseason in the books now, Uh, about to start the second week here, and the leaves are going to start changing, play a baseball's coming, Um, And then, you know, the start of the 2024 NFL season is going to be underway. So got some great things coming your way this week. Uh, A lot going on this week uh, in baseball, right? Just uh, um, I I guess like we'll we'll just name off a few of these, right? The Braves are in danger of not making the playoffs. Uh, We got Houston. (laughs) Houston's atop the AL West. Uh, and like we mentioned last week, the Dodgers are in real danger of being overtaken by not only the Diamondbacks, uh, but also the Padres. So, uh, let's dive in here. We'll start with the Braves, uh, with, uh, you know, my Braves about a month ago seemed to look pretty good for them. And, you know, they had a a nice lead in the wild card. It looked like they were firmly in, in control of that. Um, but as of today, they are the last team. Um, to get in and the Mets Giants and Cardinals are all closing in on them and just curious your thoughts on where they're headed uh, how things are going for them Uh, this I I don't feel like this is an indictment on Atlanta but it's just Arizona and San Diego can't lose right now they they both are just playing insane baseball Mm -hmm. like you know I I know Atlanta's lost seven of ten I'm aware but like even if they were playing 500 ball, like the way that San Diego and Arizona are playing, they were going to run them down in no time at all. Yeah. And like, I, and like, I, I know we talked about last episode, like San Diego short up that bullpen, which means it's now a six inning game against them. Mm-hmm. Like you better have a lead after six. Cause if you don't, good luck. Yeah. Good it's, luck. It's going to be tough. And, and don't forget, you know, Arizona, was in the world series last year so yeah um, and corbin carroll's catching fire now like that's yeah you were even saying that before i think last week like listen if he could start hitting the ball what what could happen for them so yeah. uh some big things for them and i you know it just worries me with the braves like i don't know what they can do to stop reeling right like the injuries have piled up the offense hasn't clicked this year it just feels like we talked about last year their snake bit and uh yeah every year like when we're going to talk about this in football, but like every year in football, there's a team that just has a year from hell Mm -hmm. where like they have every injury known to man. It's just, they have all this, just, just bad luck. And that's kind of Atlanta this year, man. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's okay. Like you can't, you know what I mean? Like it, it gets everyone, it gets every team. And this year it's Atlanta, man. And like, you know, give credit to Brian Snicker who still, has this team trying to play hard, but like it's like Chris sale and a bunch of dudes at this point, it feels like. Yeah. And he's even pitching well, like he pitched well against the giants. Luckily they won that game, but like they went nine innings and basically gave up no runs. And then it was the 10th that they end up scoring. But it just, I think the hard part of it is like, if your team's not good at the beginning, you know it, right? Like the white Sox, they know they knew at the end of April, like, hey, listen, this isn't isn't going to be our year, but this has been a slow burn for Atlanta, and I think that's probably the part that hurts the most. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, in the American League, right, your Red Sox now are just one game out of the third card, uh, third wild card spot. So uh, that's kind of interesting. Like, how how are you feeling about that? Um, we've come kind of come back to earth since the All Star break. Uh, August, like this month our schedule is just a murderer's road. We're just playing every playoff team essentially. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're, we, you know, we're kind of middling it wrong. We don't really lose a bunch. We don't win a bunch. Like it's, we're just kind of, we're in the middle of the road. And the fact that we're a game out uh, from the third wild card spot, I'll take, I yeah. will absolutely take. Um, and I think it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a photo finish for them. I don't, 
they didn't really get better. Um, yeah, they did. I mean, they made like some moves, but like they weren't moves that like aren't. They're not going to move the needle a ton. Yeah. Um, they kind you kind of know who they are as a team. You know the guys in the top of that lineup that are hitting. Um, you know, it, yeah, they're they're just a fast team that gets on base, but like pitching wise, like we've somehow cobbled that together and i don't yeah i don't know yeah so. it's a tough go and i mean even just looking at the standings right like you're you're looking at po- the possibility of getting three teams from the al central and three teams from the nl west in the playoffs this year and i mean yeah the the craziest thing about that the giants aren't far out like no nah. <laughs> either like it's it's insane so um i just i, I don't for, know for the record i I do not heap praise on myself often, but I would like to heap praise on calling the Kansas City Royals thing this year. Yeah. I would like to just, like, give myself a round of applause because, like, I sounded like I sounded crazy. Yeah. And when we were talking about this the spring term, I'm like, man, the Royals, I'm telling you. Like, I know they haven't done a lot recently, but I'm telling you, the Royals. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to be right every once in a while. Them and it's, the it's Twins. Nice to be right. Yeah, them and the Twins yeah. are closing in on Cleveland. So it's like, you know, it's, yeah. it's going to be an exciting last month, month and a half of baseball uh, before the playoffs start. But um, I also just wanted to point out two guys that kind of jump off the page at me. And I know we've brought them up a few times, not just because of my dad, but like Tariq Skubal right now, like if you look at what he's doing, not only is he leading the league in wins, he's leading the league in uh, ERA as well. And I believe... Yeah, now. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was second in strikeouts. Did it, did that update? Uh, yeah. Okay. He's leading the league in strikeouts. Yeah, which, yeah. Which, which I just, I mean, that puts him right in the driver's seat for the Cy Young. I mean, I, I really don't see anyone taking it from him. But one thing that's kind of interesting, it seems like about a month and a half, almost two months ago, we were looking at it and we were like, okay, well, we got a few guys that are 10-game winners, this and that. He's only got 14 wins and he leads the league. So it's like the wins have slowed. Yes for many pitchers in the last two months. And it's just where they were coming in bunches at the beginning of the year. They're not coming in bunches anymore. Um, well, he doesn't like, he's st- like, think about it. He has six, no decisions. Yeah. Out of, out of the out of possible 24 games. Like that's, that's, that screams to me. Like the dude just doesn't get a lot of run support. Yeah. He does. I mean, he's Which, playing for the Tigers, so he doesn't get a ton of run support, but no, he does not. Um, But they, I will say, from watching them play this summer, uh, they were playing inspired baseball, and that's something that's really nice to be able to see. Is you know, you you want any team if you're a fan of uh, for them to play well and play inspired, and I think that's something they were able to do. Um, but also, the, the the other guy I wanted to mention too was Aaron Judge, and I mean, th- the reason I bring him up is like, yes, he's known as a home run hitter, and I think at least. Over the last 25, 30 years, I don't typically associate big home run hitters with great batting at like having a, a great batting average, right? Um, and you look at what he's able to do. He's what third in the league right now in in batting average. I mean, he's batting yeah. three thirty two sec- second. He's second in in the majors right now. But you know, you associate home runs with RBIs and tons of total bases, right? Not necessarily yeah. batting average. So what he's been able to do while still leading the league by a large margin in home runs is quite impressive in, in my eyes. Well, I, I think that the part that is really impressive for me is for a dude that strikes out a bunch, he has an on-base percentage of um, almost 470, <laughs> which is insane. Like, the dude, is he struck out 129 times, but he's also drawn 101 walks. Now, I recognize that like some of that, like, like lately he's getting the Bonds treatment. Mm-hmm. Where like dudes are just walking him, yeah. And like honestly, it's shocking it took this long for them to figure out. Yeah. Like and then like but you see like what happens and then like Soto last night hits three homers. Yeah. Like and you're like, well, okay. Like it's kind of pick your poison, right? And that's yeah. That's the big thing. Like if you're gonna walk him, you're gonna have to deal with Soto. If you walk Soto, you're gonna have to deal with him. Like there's gonna be someone that you're gonna have to deal with in that lineup. Can't just walk everybody, right? Um, yeah, you can't walk Judge and Soto. You have to pitch to one of them. Right. Like, it's a tough thing. So, um, yeah. any anything else you wanted to cover in in baseball? Uh, I do. 
just because there's a there's a reliever for Baltimore who keeps doing what is probably the funniest thing that we're not talking, like nobody's <laughs> talking about. He did it again last night. This guy, this, I can't pronounce his first name. It's like Sinel Perez. He he's a reliever for Baltimore, and he just keeps catching home runs in his hat. Yeah, and he's not like, for the record, before you're like, is he like running these down? No, he just happens to be standing in the same place every time. He just puts his hat out and he catches home runs. And like, Satlander hit hit one last night and did the same thing. He did the same thing. He just yeah. like happened to be in the right place, took off his hat and caught it. Yeah, and, and for anyone that's skeptical on this, and when we say he keeps doing it, he's caught like eight this year. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of unbelievable. And and the bullpen in every in every park is not always in the same place so no for him to still be catching these like wherever he's going at away ballparks too it's it's impressive uh very very cool um and it just is he, i think he caught one on his birthday which is yeah cool. so i i looked because i was i because i'm sure somebody keeps a stat of this mm-hmm. this was his fourth one of the year Ah, oh, fourth. Okay, so maybe they were showing clips still, on ESPN of last year too. Yeah, um, which is still four more than like anybody should catch. Yeah, like. yeah. absolutely. He's Damn. turning he's turning the bullpen into a game, which is is kind of funny. So, uh, make sure if you're watching the Orioles, which you will be if you're watching baseball, because they're definitely making the playoffs. Um, that AL East race. Like, yeah, I love the Red Sox, but like that's a two team race and that is going to be a dog fight. It's so much fun way. watching that because oh, I, I, they they just it seems like one team has it one week and the, the other team the next. And it's just they yeah. keep going back and forth. And it's only by like a game, game and a half each time. So, yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's transition a little bit. Moving into the NFL, there's lots of news with preseason week one, right? Like uh, we got to see a lot of the prolific rookies um, as well as see some new faces on some new teams, which was a a really fun thing. But almost all of the rookie quarterbacks looked impressive in their debuts, which I, I thought was kind of a neat thing. You don't typically see that, but there were a lot of rookie quarterbacks in this class that were hyped up talked about and everything so let's start with caleb williams look he was very good in his first action um and i'm not talking about the throw to dj Moore. yeah it was a tight window all of that but the no look pass to deandre swift i watched that about 10 times that was an oh yeah unbelievable wow. pass because i i my eyes were playing tricks on me i was like how is this possible uh, but the, also the dime that he threw on the sideline to cole Komet. That was just like, and that was like 35 yards downfield. That was just on the money, right on the edge. And I mean, he just, I don't know. I I just, at least with Caleb Williams, I find him very polarizing. And the reason, uh, because I feel like there's people that either love him or hate him. uh, No one really in the middle on it. And there's this interesting dichotomy between like him playing well with the weapons that he has and Justin Fields not playing well. And like people forget that Justin Fields did not have this team around him when he was playing. He didn't have the weapons that Caleb Williams has, but also like both things don't need to be true. Caleb Williams doesn't need to be good. And Justin Fields needs to suck. Like both of them can be good players in their own right, in their own systems. Right. But I feel like people are so ingrained in that he's so much better than Justin Fields and he might be. You know, Justin Fields, we saw him with some struggles in Pittsburgh in preseason week one, but he doesn't need to be bad. Like it might be a better system for him in Pittsburgh, right? I I don't know. I just, I feel like there's a lot of people that really want to see Justin Fields fail almost more than they want to see Caleb Williams succeed. And I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So, um, uh jj mccarthy another one right uh had re- had a really good game uh it was hi- all hyped up by justin jefferson on the sideline as he threw that nice touchdown pass but then the news comes out with him getting the surgery on his meniscus in his knee um so he's going to be out for a little bit but let me just say like this this is a necessary thing and more precautionary so that something more doesn't happen to that knee in the future um, I, I just feel like people are looking at it like, oh, the Viking season is over. 
I don't think they yeah. were anticipating starting him at the beginning. So in my mind, like, I feel like it's still move ahead at, as we were going before, right? Like nothing changes, right? Yeah. Uh, what were your thoughts on? Did you see him play at all or? Well, yeah. So like McCarthy actually played really well. <laughs> like, and that was, I think that was the thing that like, and again, it, from what I had read, like he was about to get start getting more because Darnold was getting all the first team reps in camp. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the word on the street was like, oh, okay, he's going to start getting more first team reps, McCarthy, after this game. And then like the next day he's like, hey, my knee hurts. And then they found out hey, it's a meniscus thing. Mm-hmm. The, the thing they don't know is obviously if it's, you know, like a, a quick fix, like where they just have to like fix a little bit of it or if it's a complete tear where he's just done until next season. Um, I <sighs> That's tough because the Vikings have a window, and, like, the Vikings are a decent team. I, I, I kind of hope for McCarthy's sake, like, to be honest with you, I wouldn't rush him back. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's Minnesota any need to. Minnesota has their first-round pick this year. Like, they can afford, like... They, they can afford to just do what they can with Sam Darnold and like not rush him back. Yeah. They, so. um, he was the one and you, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. He was the, the one of the quarterbacks that I felt had the most pressure on him coming into the NFL. And the reason I feel that way is because people really like the big knock on him was like, he wasn't really asked to do that much at Michigan. Like he wasn't yeah. asked to really be a, a quarterback there. And so like, for him to come in and, and have that success now, granted it's one week in preseason and now we're not going to get to see him for who knows how long, but I thought he checked some boxes in that, in that start. And I definitely liked what I saw from him. Um, but uh, next up JT Daniels, right? Um, yeah. What'd you think of him? I mean, I, you go ahead first on this. I, again, it's hard because I don't, Every, all these people that are playing, they're playing against, like, second stringers. And, like, this is preseason. So, like, I'm not trying to, like, I, I'm not trying to get too gassed up. The only one, there's somebody we're going to talk about that's not on this list that I'm gassed up about. Mm-hmm. We'll save that. But the the throw that Daniels had, like, that's an NFL throw. Yeah. That's an NFL throw. Yeah, it was. Like, it was cool to see. And you should have cool jumped. See. I loved it. You should have jumped all over me too. It's Jaden Daniels. For some reason, I was thinking JT, and I'm not sure why, but sorry, Jaden. Yeah, Jaden okay. Daniels. Yeah, I, I got you. He he definitely made an NFL throw with that pass, and uh, I'm I'm very excited. They actually made some news too in the headlines. Martavius uh, Bryant is coming back. I saw that. After I, forgot a, about, I forgot about that dude. After a six year NFL hiatus, like that is that is big news. So. I'm curious. I think he's going to make the team. And I'll tell you, as a slot receiver, I don't know if you remember him, but he's like 6'5", tall, lean, and can go up and get the ball. Be awesome to see him play well. Um, You know, I don't know what to expect from that. I don't know if he's going to make the team, but really would be a good thing to see. Um, Yeah, it'll be – it's cool. I I hope he does, and I hope that he does well because, like, that's that's kind of a cool story. Like, the dude was, like, kicked out of the league for drugs, and, like, he had to go – he had to start all the way over and mm-hmm. it's like cool to, it's cool to see him like work his way back. Yeah. Really happy so. for him uh, to be able to do that. Um, Cause it shows that, you know, uh, the redemption tour really, really nice. So yeah. Uh, the last three, I kind of just uh, put together, but I know you're probably going to want to comment on one of them. Uh, Bo Nix, Drake may and uh, Spencer Radler. I-, I think they all seem to find their groove uh, as well. Yeah. Like Bo Nix, I thought was better than advertised. Um, they said, okay, like he, he really just makes the first read and that's it. I think you saw him get through his progressions a little bit more than just going first read, not there, go down or run, take off and run. Um, it was really nice to be able to see him play. What, what did you think of Drake may? Well, he only played one series. Mm -hmm. So like not a whole lot to write about, but since we're talking about the new England Patriots, I would love to talk about my new Lord and savior, Joe Milton. I'd love to talk about him for like. 30 seconds. A guy that actually looks 
NFL ready. Again, I need to preface this with, I understand that this is preseason. I understand it was against the Carolina Panthers, whose second string is probably worse than most. Close to UMass. I, I, yeah, yeah, I understand <laughs> that. But God damn, was it nice to watch nice quarterback play from a quarterback of the New England Patriots again. God damn, it felt nice. Yeah, especially in today's NFL where you need to have kind of that running ability. But Al, the biggest thing was he had a feel for the position. Like you could tell by watching him, this guy has a feel for understanding pressure in the pocket, a feel for when to throw the ball, when to tuck it and run. Like he actually looked like an NFL quarterback. I, I was kind of yeah. shocked. I'm like, man, you guys yeah. might have a guy on your roster. There um, was a play where he like the, the play was just breaking down and he like spin moves twice mm-hmm. and picks up like 15 yards for a first down. You're like, God damn. Yeah. Like I, I don't know if he gets away with this against first string defenses, but I'd like to see him try. Like, yeah. Because the, the talk coming out of camp with New England is that Drake May is struggling. <laughs> yeah. Which, I don't know what's going to happen with that. I assume that Brissett's going to play a majority of the snaps this year. Yeah. Because, like, if you're the Patriots, you can kind of afford – you can afford to sit him for a year. Mm-hmm. But well, – You guys cut yeah. Juju. He's gone. Yeah. So... yeah no, we're, we're in full – we're not trying to win a lot of games this year, but the problem is, is our defense is too good that that's not, I, I think we're going to be in a lot of games. This well, year that's that people aren't respect. That might change too. The, there's talks of Judon being, being the subject of trade talks as well. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have to kind of see, I, I just think the way they handled, I'm going to say something, uh, Mac Jones, If you watched him with Jacksonville, he actually looked like a decent quarterback. It seems like he had some coaching that went into the way he played. What they did to him in in New England was malfeasance. Like, it it just, it it still, it will always bug me. And am I glad that New England made some mistakes and, like, butchered their chance with a, a, you know, a round one quarterback? Absolutely. But... He didn't deserve that. And the fans like unjustly took it out on Mac Jones and granted he made some boneheaded plays, but he was the quarterback for Alabama, man. Nick Saban yeah. wouldn't have started him if he was trash. There is no yeah. like, Hey, we're just going to start the best guy we've got. No, like Mac Jones, like earned the spot, right? Like it just, I, I don't in, in know. In a quarterback man. room that had uh, Jalen uh, Mil- Milro and Bryce Young, like he was the dude. Yeah, yeah. He was the so dude. he was the dude after Tua, and like that's gonna that's gonna say something, like, right? It just uh, good to see for him uh, playing well in Jacksonville. He's probably not gonna see a lot of playing time, um, but because no. uh, Trevor Lawrence stays fairly healthy and you know toughs it out, who's I think he's tougher than people give him credit for. But um, yeah. it's the hair. It's it's got to be the hair that people think that he's not tough. But yeah. Um, some unfortunate injuries that came up. Malik Neighbors seems like he's going to be okay. He said there's no way he's not playing week one. So, um, which I, I definitely like to hear, right? Like that's, that's good news for him. Um, I've seen a couple of clips out of camp and Neighbors is just making obscene catch after obscene catch. Like yep. he's just bullying dudes and he's also starting fights, which I kind of love to see. Yeah. He's throwing punches. He's yeah. like. I I want the I like the chippiness. I like the attitude. I see him there there's something that comes with being a receiver from LSU and I know Ohio State says like hey we're the guys, right? Like we we pump out the receivers. Ohio uh, uh, Ohio State pumps out the quarterbacks. I wouldn't necessarily Well, they were say they pump out they've, the they've dubbed themselves Wide Receiver University. And what, that's what's bullshit. what's kind that's, of excuse my language. That's yeah. At, well, after Marvin Harrison Jr. got drafted and stuff. And now, you know, you had Chris Olave before you had Garrett Wilson. Uh, wasn't Drake London? Was he Ohio State as well? I can't remember. But you look at the guys that have come out of LSU with 
with Chase and Jefferson and now neighbors, like it's really tough to look at those guys and be like, all right, we found guys better than them. They're yeah. arguably, they're both top five receivers in the NFL. One of them is argued as the best receiver in the NFL. So it's, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of wild, but drink one in USC. USC. Ah, okay. Yeah. I was wrong about that. For some reason I was thinking maybe it was the Falcon colors that got me thinking that, mm. but uh, another injury that happened, Jameer Gibbs hamstring yeah and now the dude's not gonna get his house now come on yeah this come on the frustrating piece about this is that i learned all too well last year that hamstring injuries are not fun right nope. not only That's did no i joke. yeah not only did i get one myself but i also drafted cooper cup with in the first round which was just as bad as getting a, a personal hamstring injury and uh and uh, you know christian watson he's hearing me uh, because it, it's not a fun recovery for that. Now, Dan Campbell said it's nothing and he, he should be back very soon. He shouldn't miss any time in the regular season, but it does give you a little concern. They're hoping for a grade one, but we should find out probably later this week exactly what's going to happen with that. So um, you concerned about Gibbs at all? or I, I get, as somebody that, jumped in guillotine league early because both my running backs had hamstring issues i i know this this pain all too well that usually doesn't bode well for a good season because like yeah. what ends up happening is they try to rush back and then they aggravate it again or the, even worse they tear it and then like then it's all over well and he's a guy that relies on that breakaway speed right and that quickness um, last thing you want to do is have him running down the sideline on a 60 yard touchdown run and he tears his hammy, right? Like that's not, yeah. it's not a good thing. So, ah, uh, best, uh, hopefully he has a quick recovery coming back. Um, some other news first. Now I I'm going to skip ahead here real quick because I just think it's small news, but I think it should be mentioned because it explains the rules, uh, that these teams kind of have and the their confinements of what they're dealing with. Uh, Chase Claypool who's on his fourth team now, the Buffalo Bills, he's had Damn. a turf toe injury. And he was put on IR, um, which there was some incorrect reports about what happened with that. Some were saying that they could bring him back. Some were saying they couldn't. But effectively, it really ends his season. And the reason being is because based on the rules of the teams now, uh, today in the NFL, what it is is when they have to cut down to the 53-man roster, which is August 27th. At yeah. that point, they can they can designate two guys for IR that they can bring back during the season, right? Yep. They only can bring back eight guys off of a IR during the season, unless you make the playoffs and then you get two more. So, sure, ten total if you're a playoff team. The Bills might be a playoff team, but. I'm not. They, they are. I think they yeah, are. I'm not sure that at fi when they get down to 53, that he's going to be one of the guys that they're going to invest in to bring back, off of off of IR to be able to start yeah. the season. Um, I just don't think that's going to happen. So likely, he's seen his last bit of football with the Bills, um, at least for this season. If they cut him and agree to a settlement or something like that, injury settlement, he can go and sign with another team. I don't know any other team that's going to take him at this point. I don't even think Tomlin would take him back on the Steelers. Um, so I just think uh, sad to see that go down, but that kind of gave a lot of clarity as to the way the things uh, it, the NFL is run nowadays in terms of IR placement and roster construction. Um, other thing I was going to mention, Hassan Reddick, right? And like, this is a, yeah, this oh, is something man. that, that has blown up, but it's basically like a masterclass for Howie Roseman on when to dump guys. Right. And it just shows like, he knows how to be able to maneuver around that roster management very, very effectively, very well. Um, they traded Hassan in March for a conditional third round pick to the jets. They get Bryce. Is it Huff? I think, uh, for him, which he's going to be one of their pass rushers that they they brought in. Uh, and I think he's going to be good. You know, he led, uh, actually, I don't know if he led the Jets, but I know that he did have double-digit sacks for them last year. Fairly certain of that. Yeah. yeah. Bryce Huff, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, but Hassan Reddick, he gets traded to the Jets. 
the first presser shows up, talks about, you know, training camp, them him being traded, getting to meet the teammates, like all of that stuff. Um, but other than that first press conference, he has not shown up. His agent yeah. has told him, do not show up. You got traded here knowing that you were supposed to get, like they were trading for you to rework a deal for you. So do not show up until that happens. Well, Douglas from the Jets GM, he's basically said like he's expected to be here he, with his teammates. He's getting fined every day. Aaron Rodgers has come out now and said like, dude, come on, show up. Like you're going to miss out on a great season if you're not here for this. Um, so just kind of curious, like your thoughts, because again, another issue that's very polarizing with people, people are like, oh, just shut up and show up to camp. But I kind of understand where he's coming from. First of all, if Howie Roseman calls you at this point, don't answer the call. Like, you're going to get fleeced by him. Yeah. Like, it just has become a list, like, of which teams hasn't Howie Roseman fleeced at yeah. this point. Oh, yeah. Um, And it, I'm, I'm a little torn between this because the way the Jets are making this sound like, from what I've read, is that they thought they were going to do something with him, like an extension in the offseason. Yeah. And the fact that if you're the Jets, like you don't have that extension like hammered out in place before you trade for him, that like, because you see that all the time with like teams in the NFL. They're like, cool, we're going to trade him. And then we immediately sign this guy to an extension. Yeah. It happens in the NBA so frequently. Yeah. Like, that, like it's a sign, a sign and trade, like a, I, I know it's called a sign and trade, but like trade and extend, right? Yeah. And they do yeah. that with and multiple just, players. And if you're the Jets, like, you didn't do your homework on that? Like, that's just poor planning on their part. Right. To assume, like, you know what happens when you assume. Yeah. Like, they also, they, this is a guy that's critical to that defense, right? Like, they're bringing in just, a, a top flight yeah, has, pass rusher. He's at, he has 50 and a half sacks in the last four seasons. Yeah, that's not nothing to sneeze at. Mm -hmm. He knows how to get after the quarterback and could be a big difference maker on this team, especially with how good this defense is, right? Yeah. But he feels he's very underpaid, and that's something that really bothers him. Um, enough yeah. so, enough so that he's not going to show up until he does get get that deal. So, man, really a a tough go for for the Jets with that. And I'm not sure how you get it figured out because it seems like they're so far apart. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. It, it really, yeah. it, even even you look at the Brandon Ayuk situation, right? At least he's having conversations with San Francisco. Yeah, it's a different story every single day and it's created this drama around that team um, as well as with the Steelers, right? But they're at least having conversations. The Jets are basically like he came out and said like yeah now now he's even asking to be traded, and they're like we're not going to trade this guy he's expected no. to be here right so well, it's because like, at this point too the Jets have zero leverage. Yeah, I, I just I almost feel like you should have known. What well, and that's the thing is like I don't know understand why the Jets didn't do this with the Eagles like because like the Eagles had no leverage. Mm -hmm. like that dude was gonna hold out like that dude was gonna hold out right and he had burned that bridge in philly and like yeah man i just they yeah. ended up getting a third round pick but it's i believe it's conditional on him playing so they may get nothing for it but they did get bryce huff in, in return which is a big deal yeah. like they added and, a pass rusher to their team and philly got that money off their cap yeah like yeah they did so which was 14 and a half million something like that that's huge yeah it's a big like, deal big deal yeah. so man we will see what happens with that is there anything else you want to cover for nfl this week uh i mean i know the patriots are a mess right now but like it's nice to see that the jets are consistently still a mess no matter what yeah it makes my heart so happy yeah it does if you get a chance so. you got to check out the uh Mike McDaniel interview on Pat McAfee, definitely worth it. He is just, I'll tell you, he is money every time he's on TV. It, yeah. it really is. He is just, his his demeanor, his attitude, 
with his his brilliance at the same time and his kind of lackluster like just chill vibe of him makes yeah. him must watch tv oh did you um I, I don't know if we talked about this last week but uh dk metcalf taking off his helmet and swinging it at dudes in practice yeah i i don't know if we talked about it last week but let's let's well, mention it now like what so kind of suicide is that uh to, well, to mess with him not, well not funny but like i guess it's kind of funny it's like they were doing like an interview or they were like doing a report from camp and in the background you watch matt Cap like take off his helmet and start swinging it at yeah him. yeah in the back of the interview <laughs> i just it, it oh man you know what it reminded me of and like because I'm thinking to myself, like, who would ever make a decision to, like, fight a man that big, right? But most people would just yeah. be like, no, I'm not I'm not going to do that. I'm going to actually avoid that if I can. In receiver, when George Kittle was standing in, in line, uh, I think they were welcoming out people onto the field. He's like, I got to get my helmet on. Bosa's coming. He's going to headbutt me. And Bosa came yeah. out and, like, 30 seconds later headbutted him. And he's like, see, glad I have my helmet on. And, like, <laughs> it's just like... You don't mess with people that big, right? I was think I was thinking about it recently with Metcalf, and Metcalf is the wide receiver version of Derrick Henry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like. Yeah. I. He's I, really fast, and if you decide you're gonna try to tackle him, like, good luck. Yeah, but everyone tries to pick a fight with him, and I think it's because they know he'll fight back. That like they do it. That's why I'm kind of excited for Seattle this year. If his own defense wants to fight him, like, man, that team's a bunch of dogs. I think he, yeah, I think he's coming out on a mission this year. I I really do. So, yeah. uh, But let's stop with the helmet throwing and and stuff like that. Like, it's super dangerous. Even even with the new helmets, like, you could definitely really, a guy like his size, you could kill somebody by hitting them in the head with a helmet. Um, So. Let's ease up on that, right, DK? Yeah. Um, and maybe I'll draft you, because I want to. I want to see you get it, get after it out there. Um, all right. So uh, before we wrap up here, trivia question last week was who was the high, who had the highest amount of passing yards for the Chicago Bears? Um, and I had to actually look this one up. I I thought for a second it might have been Jay Cutler. Um, that, that's what I would have thought too. Yeah. But uh, am I right with this? Eric Kramer? Yeah. Yeah, Eric, Eric Kramer at 95. Yeah, he had 38-38, so still no 4,000-yard passer, which based on the way Caleb Williams was playing in that first preseason game, yes, it's preseason. Yes, I understand what I'm saying. Take it with a grain of salt. He went, I think it was 6 of 9, and there was two balls on that that were dropped and threw for 95 yards. Like, on two series, he threw for 95 yards. You're telling me like he can't get more than that in a game? Like I, I really, I really think that if there's someone that's got a legitimate shot to get get to 4K, it's probably him. Yeah, um, which I didn't realize until I watched the first episode of Hard Knocks of the Bears. Mm-hmm. Well, like they casually mentioned that, and you're like, this is a passing league. Yeah. How? How is? Why? Like, they've just never look at the quarterback like i can't remember a good quarterback that they've had on their team in the years that i mean kyle orton he wasn't great rex grossman led him to a super bowl he wasn't great right like none of those guys were, were really that good so now we'll have to see but uh any you got a new one for him this week yeah um since we're, we're talking about the jets um who holds the single season record for sacks in a season by a New York Jet? Ooh, there we go. That's going to be a good one. So, yeah, guys, make sure you go ahead and drop that answer below in the comments, and uh, we will definitely cover that next week for you guys. But uh, that's about it for today, man. Right? Yeah. We're going to be back next week. We'll have more Major League Baseball coverage, more NFL coverage for you guys. Um, and in a few weeks... Al and I are going to be doing our projections episode for Super Bowl picks, MVP, rookie of the where year. Where I don't pick the Jets to win the Super Bowl. Where I don't pick the Jets to make the Super Bowl. Just letting you know now. Just I always feel you know like now. it's a year past. So, like, whoever I'm picking this year, it's for next year, 
right? And mm. that, it could be like the Bengals and the Eagles this year in it. Who knows? Um, but uh, I just want you guys to lock in because it is almost football time and we are ready to go. So uh, without further ado, Al, love you, bro. I love you too, man. Yeah. Great week Peace. that we had. Peace. Yeah.